So now we're going to move to um, two eco-feminists from Chile, Carolina Argurto Flores and Costanza Riquelme Bortes, Borquez. Um, thank you so much, Costanza and Carolina. So Carolina is 33 years old. She's got a 15 year old son, lives in a rural area of Central Valley of Chile, which bases its economy on peasant agriculture. And in the last 30 years on patriarchal agro extractivism capitalist, cap form of capitalism. She, uh, Carolina is an eco-feminist activist for women's rights based on sex particularly peasant women, the right to nutrition and food and the right to food sovereignty. She works independently as a nutritionist and has a master's degree in human nutrition. Now, Constanza is 30 years old and an agronomist by profession. She's a teacher and facilitator in agroecology for peasant farmers and she travels from the north to central zone of Chile. She writes in Eco Feminas Criticas and is active in food sovereignty movements because she wants to exercise her right to work and care for the land. We are going to read our talk and this is an ecofeminist look at the rights based on the sex of peasant girls and women in Chile. Uh, how did we come to be concerned about the threat of erasure of women? Uh, at Ecofeminas Criticas, we are a couple of friends interested, interested in the study and practice of critical ecofeminism. Uh, we meet through social media networks at the beginning of a pandemic, and we began to share our readings and analysis on our ecology and ecofeminism. Meanwhile, thanks to social networks, we have been more or less aware of the censorship uh, that radical feminists are receiving around the world and about the legal erasure of women. So we are very happy and grateful to be able to share with you today about our little experience. And we would like to have some uh, questions, co um, comments, we will be very happy uh, to have uh, this. Um, we have long been linked to movements against agrochemicals, transgenic, uh, transgenics, and agribusiness in general. And we are promoters, so we are promoters of agroecology and food sovereignty in our territories, which complements our ecofeminist position. Uh, Constanza lives in an urban area and me, Carolina, in a rural area and we both share great concern about the advance of capital, uh, capitalist devastation and as ecofeminists, we understand that this is part of the ecocidal and femicidal masculine system. To do this, together with another feminist collective uh, from rural, another rural area from Chile called Florida Autoconvocadas, we prepare a popular initiative for a constitutional norm in which we propose seven articles on the rights of rural girls and women to be enshrined in the new constitution in Chile. Uh, this initiative uh, should have had uh, 5,000 uh, signatures, but it only reached uh, 1,000, uh, which is why the conventional constituent called uh, Francisca Arauna, uh, who represents uh, the district where, where I live, uh, which is uh, very rural, uh, she has presented uh, this initiative to the convention. Uh, this means that uh, the rights of rural girls and women will soon be part of the constitutional debate. And we have made this, um, uh, this proposal uh, um, based on the international declarations of uh, rights of women based on sex. So the truth is that we don't, we don't have much hope that these articles will be approved, but we hope to continue making them known to girls and women in rural areas. Uh, since the current constitution should safeguard uh, compliance with international treaties, such as the Convention of, for the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women, 
which was ratified by Chile in the 2019. Uh, but why it is necessary to talk about the specific rights of rural girls and women? Uh, this is the objective of this little talk, talk we have prepared for you, and we hope it will be of interest to other women who are carrying out similar struggles. Uh, so I give the word to my uh, friend Constanza. My worry about the child and woman rights began in 2013 when I got I got uh, poisoned uh, on my first internship working on a farm with um, um, agrochemicals. Uh, when I began to question um, the abusive application for agrochemicals, um, I um, realized uh, this effect. Women uh, unequally, especially uh, once in their uh, reproductive cycles, since they can cause abortions, uh, premature births, uh, birth, and birth defects and well as other alternatives in their growth. In so 2016, while I carried out a um, judicial uh, process uh, against an universe placement for sexual violence, I figured out um, chauvinist historical, historical traditions that involved a sexual um, workers, a students, a ex students, a staff members, a, and academics from a, the agronomy faculty at PUCB. Um, this tradition um, consisted in organize, organizing uh, parties in which they um, hired women as sexual workers. Uh, the top of the iceberg of these traditions is the usual uh, treatment against women at the university. Um, Reification of women, uh, chauvinist jokes, stalking sexual violence, um, a scorn of women Abilities on the agricultural uh, sector are just a few examples. Uh, both experience as well um, as the commemoration of the 50 years since the Chilean agricultural reform uh, motivated uh, me to uh, dig into uh, the agricultural history and ecofeminism from the sexual difference to do a rural Chilean epistemological uh, reconstitution in order to educate from uh, for and with one. Everything uh, I mentioned before led um, embrace abolitionist feminist science. I realized that the real objective of feminist is not equality among women and men, but women liberation from uh, masculine oppressions. I continue with the how we may, uh, we came to to sign this um, declaration, international declaration. Uh, I have to say that um, uh, well, uh, I live in a rural area, so we are. I have not been in very touch with uh, uh, urban feminism. So my touch with feminism was a uh, true lecture of uh, the second sex. So when I knew, I know that the feminists come from uh, Santiago de Chile, which is the capital of Chile, um, the things are very different because in the rural areas, we feel very much strongly the, the, the heavy of uh, gender. But that doesn't occur in maybe in in urban areas because in rural areas the the women are um, uh, under a big oppression by uh, maternity and a lot of kids. 
So uh, the natality in rural areas is three times higher than in urban areas in Chile. So um, as we know uh, our history of, from our grandmothers, for example, that uh, they live uh, a very hard life. So uh, for us, it's very, very clear what is depression. So it's very easy to, uh, uh, to, to turn feminist. But in rural and urban areas, maybe this is more difficult because um, uh, there are a lot of uh, sexual neoliberalism <laughs> very present in Chile with the lobby of prostitution um, inside the feminism. Um, so I believe that my concern for the rights of peasant girls and women emerges from several points among, the, among them is knowing the history of my grandmothers, as I said, who had to work uh, in the employer systems of the large states that existed in Chile until the 70s. And the other, on the other hand, the feminist uh, awakening of uh, 2018 uh, which brought my closer to reading The Second Sex, which allowed me to cultivate a critical view of the rapid neoliberal turn in the women's movement in Chile. Therefore, uh, the, the same year, uh, they began to call me TERF, my friends, some of my friends, for saying that the oppression that women experience is based on sex and not on gender, and that before, therefore trans, trans women are not part of feminist movement. This reaction took me by surprise because up to the point, I was not aware of this feminist uh, fight. Uh, therefore, I began to get information on my inter on internet, and that is how I met radical collectives on social networks. And thanks to them, I took some readings about radical feminism in parallel to my studies on ecofeminism with Constanza, with whom I also met through social network. It was been really shocking for us to realize the danger that transgenderism brings to the daily lives of all women. Uh, and added to this, we believe that the sexual subordination of women is that has historically allowed maintaining private ownerships of the land and concentrated in the hands of uh, men, which today is part of the concerns we have as ecologists, ecologists women uh, who see the advance of green capitalism embodied by agribusiness and mining in our territories. We are uh, uh, abolitionists because we believe on the total uh, liberation of women. That to say a uh, general uh, prostitution, uh, pornography, uh, reproductive exploitation, and any form uh, of oppressions uh, based on our sex must be eradicated. Uh, this is a titanic uh, tax which uh, will last our whole lives, but them are uh, worth it, and we as women don't um, deserve a warm movement, uh, nor serve uh, to the patriarchy and its institution. From our uh, ecofeminist point of view, uh, this extent to any form of operations and exploitation uh, of uh, nature such um, as the privatization of land, um, water, and all of biodiversity as we recognize ourselves as part, a part of the biosphere. And as parent, uh, to the liberation of women is inherently like it um, to the territories uh, we inherit and our ways of living. We are uh, convinced the feminist mass um, abandoned uh, to andro anthropocentric impose it, be the colonial and post colonial patriarchy uh, root with the ancestral. and. Uh, at the same time, prioritizing women and political subjects. Uh, otherwise, our agenda uh, will continue diluting uh, among other many social movements uh, women are suffering today. Um, however, however uh, this emerging feminist movement, movement uh, in Chile is represented of 
media be some coordinating uh, committees that are openly pro uh, transgenderism uh, and pro -current. In fact, uh, the artist collective now as Las Tesis, a creator of the worldwide now song called Un Violador en Tu Camino, published um, a manifest uh, in a 20, uh, 2021 that uh, replaced feminist uh, conceptualizations uh, for others that belong uh, to the queer theory. Uh, we believe uh, universities also have had a huge responsibility on the neoliberal turn of feminism in Chile. So why is critical ecofeminism necessary for us? Uh, ecofeminism is a feminist movement and current uh, that emerged in the 70s that sees a connection between the exploitation and degradation of nature and the subordination and oppression of women. Uh, that is, uh, is a theory and praxis of feminism and environmentalism. Uh, and this is reflected uh, that it, in the majority participation of women in the defense of the land against patriarchal extractivist devastation, a situation that is repeated throughout the world. world. Some well-known activists have been Berta Cáceres, Wangari Matai, and currently Vandana Chiva, Alicia Puleo, among many others. Uh, like, uh, Ecologist, uh, ecofeminism is a materialistic, critical, and complex thought uh, similar to the metabolic relationships that occur within ecosystems, or in an agroecological language, a polyculture of women's thought. As we know, uh, the extractivism that fuels the entropic, entropic capitalist economy has led to an existential crisis for our species. Ecofeminism interpret this reality uh, to transform it and just as it understands gender as oppression for women, the feminization of the herd as mother is the ideology that allows the development of an ecocidal androcentric culture. Our entire, entire struggle for survival is the product of the andro-anthropocentrism of Western culture that has colonized uh, the species, oppressed and exploited the body of women and on the earth. Our territories have been invaded by agro-extractivism for centuries and more recently in a more extensive way thanks to the Green Revolution of the 60s and 70s. While in uh, 2022, and 22, we face the green reformism of capitalism, camouflage uh, as sustainability, modern cooperative, uh, circular economy, green credits, carbon neutrality, etc. Uh, this alarms and worries us, so we believe it is necessary to build a collective and emancipatory political ethic and, pra and praxis that is up to the times and that is capable of denouncing and protecting us uh, from the new threats or to bio biodiversity and local agro-system uh, because they grant us uh, food uh, sovereignty. Uh, so we um, believe that the exploitation of health is inseparable from the exploitation of women and that is why we express the need, the need uh, to sow and nurture a polyculture of thought to repeal a movement uh, for the liberation of women and the hair. The greatest approach of women with uh, nature uh, was early um, analyzed uh, by uh, Simone de Beauvoir, who understood uh, this uh, supposedly essential, rela essential relationship as a form of uh, legit legitimation of the masculine control is a uh, natural life uh, to see woman as a frail, obedient and essentially um, as caretakers um, because of our sexual difference. As it feminists and uh, nature as mother earth, which uh, infinite love or research never ends. These visions uh, has been uh, developed by phil uh, philosopher and occidental uh, uh, scientists uh, that uh, strengthened uh, uh, science uh, and te 
technological uh, development intended to unveil. Uh, supposedly, mechanical uh, functionment uh, of nature with um, the only intention of extract all is wealth, uh, meaning old extraction, industrial, uh, agriculture, uh, etc. One of the adventures uh, of the economic uh, theories uh, is that is contributed um, by a materialist school of thought uh, that is based on analysis of the root of the problem that affects life of women and nature uh, as the patriarchy, colonialists and capitalists are all domination systems that uh, were born uh, during the historical appropriation, the part of men um, that belong to sexual minorities and the reproductive um, uh, capability of women. Um, this is a vital point to criticize the neoliberal and postmodern uh, conceptualization of new uh, genera. Uh, theories eman uh, emanated uh, from the academic, uh, which uh, simply omit the analysis of sexual um, here, um, hierarchy uh, that uh, beneath uh, men. Uh, we positioned ourselves on a critical uh, side of the Latin American ecofeminist that can uh, seek to talk uh, with other aspects of the fight of women, such uh, as the communitarian and rural feminists, uh, the radical and autonomous feminists, anti-racist feminists, and feminists of sexual minorities. Uh, moreover, uh, agroecology uh, also responds to a global fight uh, that is key uh, for women to reestablish uh, the autonomy of our body land territory. Why we, we worry about gender? Because uh, climate change uh, does not affect women and men equally. Uh, it is estimated that in the coming decades, uh, the effect of climate change will constitute the major threat uh, to the lives and well being of billions of people. Effects on human health can be relatively direct through phenomena such as heat waves floods and storms, or indirectly by modifying the behavior of infectious diseases, altering agricultural ecosystem, migrations to the droughts, etc. However, many of the risks of the climate change bring us very according to gender. A globally, disaster such as drought, floods and storms claims the life for more women than men, especially the youngest. But this apparent greater vulnerability of women is not only given by, by our biological differences, but also by the social roles and responsibility uh, signed to women, to women uh, gender, which is gender. Uh, growing food insecurity in Latin America and Chile uh, affects mainly to uh, rural areas and mainly to women. So how do sex and gender interact uh, from an ecofeminist perspective, it is necessary to know sexual differences. For example, to monitor the growth, development, and body composition of girls and women, and of prevalent diseases such, such as diabetes and obesity, others linked uh, to sex such as uh, breast cancer and endometriosis, which are very related to um, to the contamination or uh, linked to the gender such as eating behavior disorders. There to the definition of the World Health Organization that defines sex as the biological and physiological characteristics of women and men, while gender are the socially constructed norms, functions and relationships and, and that each society considers proper to men, masculinity or women, femininity. Gender determines uh, what is expected, allowed, and valued in a woman or a man in a given context. 
From an eco-feminist perspective, it, it is necessary to recognize that sexual hierarchy built by gender in our female sex body uh, is built uh, on our female sex body. As Margarita Pisano thought, as uh, femininity is not an autonomous space with possibilities of equality, self-management or independence. Independence. It is a symbolic and value construction designed by masculinity and contained in it as an integral part. Uh, so we do not uh, uh, believe in gender in any way. From the employer's latifundium uh, to the global latifundium, uh, genre um, ownership and exploitation of the earth. According to the from 1997 to the 2007 um, agricultural census in Chile, 75% uh, of small owners, uh, unless that 4% um, uh, of the land, uh, while the richest 1.5% uh, on 74% uh, of land of the land. Uh, the richest 0.5% uh, on 17% um, of the land average uh, 15,000 hectares eight property. In relation uh, to women and land ownership, in Chile we own only 9% of the national surface. Um, this, uh, this data uh, indicate uh, that there is a structural condition of uh, inequal uh, land uh, tenure, uh, both in relation um, to the number of farms and the area in which they are located. Uh, this put uh, food uh, sovereignty uh, at serious risk, as well as the threat of fire products uh, of transgenic uh, monocultures.